So we have now loaded this uh, uh, test program for our input output macros. So we now have it in our code. So this is uh, the sample program moa.asm to experiment with input and output. And the first uh, macro that we can experiment with uh, is called output. So the example of the output is very simple. Uh, the way it works uh, is that uh, basically uh, we define a sequence of bytes, use an appropriate label, and here it says please enter up to 10 characters of text. And uh, uh, of course uh, what's going to happen is that when we say output and provide this label as a parameter for this output macro, it will uh, print these characters on the screen. Now notice that uh, string literals in uh, assembly are not automatically uh, terminated by a null character or zero character. So we have to do this manually. So this is why our byte strings here uh, terminate by zero and that's uh, a requirement uh, for our output uh, uh, macro. So there is uh, uh, basically the the characters uh, starting at the source address like this okay uh, in this example we have this prompt and we display this prompt using the output macro uh, terminated by null and uh, uh, the flags or registers are affected is none so the output is not going to change any of your registers or any of your flag values The input macro is going to allow us to read characters from the keyboard. It has two parameters, destination and length. So this is an example of input. And once we provided this uh, prompt to the user, please enter up to 10 characters. So we uh, have to allocate some kind of memory buffer. In our case, what I'm doing here is I'm allocating memory buffer which is a sequence of 12 bytes and I'm just going to duplicate the question mark uh, in all of these 12 bytes uh, so they're all initialized uh, to zero to begin with and so these 12 bytes right here remember duplication is like an array in assembly so this is really like 12 bytes that we're going to uh, provide in this buffer so this uh, buffer, um, we need to provide the buffer and we also have to specify what is the length of this buffer. Also remember that length of operator that we discussed uh, part of our assembly language components presentation can be uh, obtained more generically. So if we want to specify that the buffer size is 12, uh, we can just use the length of and specify the name of the buffer. I think it will be better version of this program to use the length of operator um, and to make it more generic. So if the, um, if the number of um, uh, elements in this array of bytes uh, changes we don't have to change it right here so this is uh, I think is is a good uh, uh, approach to make this uh, program more flexible now notice that in order to accommodate 10 characters we have to have a buffer which is um, two characters or two bytes longer than the number of characters that we want to accommodate and the reason for it is that when we have this um, 12 bytes, right, so there's like some sort of uh, a memory array of 12 bytes right here, okay, and buffer, of course, is the address of this uh, buffer in memory. And uh, um, when the user is going to type some characters like A, B, C, and so forth, so the user is going to type some characters into this uh, buffer uh, and the input will be able to accept it. So the thing is that at the end of this buffer, the user is going to hit the enter key on the keyboard and it's the nature of standard input in um, uh, Microsoft Windows environment that it's going to automatically place uh, carriage return and line feed okay a carriage return and line feed at the end uh, of this buffer so the uh, 
uh, uh, Windows uh, standard input uh, is designed so that it adds two of these characters at the end when the user hits the enter key. So this is why in order to be able to accommodate uh, 10 characters over here, right? So we're just going to accept up to 10 characters from the user. We need to allocate the buffer size plus 2 to be able to accept the carriage return and line feed from the user. This is just the technicality. Uh, so here just remember that we need to allocate our buffers always two times uh, I mean, two uh, two characters longer than the number of characters that we want to be able to accept from the user. So this is the way the input works. So you need to have some kind of buffer. You have to uh, provide the length of the buffer, and it needs to be two characters longer than the maximum length of the input that you are willing to accept. So uh, what happens next uh, is that uh, when uh, uh, so we mentioned it here in the um, in the rules for using this macro. It's really not that difficult. We would just uh, use uh, uh, longer buffers right here. Uh, but uh, also uh, the input macro automatically replaces the carriage return character by a null byte, basically the byte with all zeros. So as a result of successful input right here is that the buffer is populated by characters entered by the user and at the end it's guaranteeing to have a null uh, terminated character. So of course the input macro updates memory at the specified destination, right? So our memory buffer is going to be populated with the characters and the flags or register values affected by the input macro is none. The only requirement that we have is that the user have to, um, after typing whatever they like to enter, they need to hit the, hit the enter key. Now once uh, uh, we um, uh, accept this buffer, it should be possible to echo it back. So we say text entered, so we say out text entered. So then um, this string is going to be printed, you entered. And the next thing is that we just grab the content of the buffer and we echo it back to the user. So we're going to output it. Now, end line uh, is configured as uh, uh, right here for debugging purposes, my version of end line is using semicolon at the end of the uh, string of characters, then carriage return, line feed, and the zero terminated character. So this should generate a cursor movement to the next line in the console output. So that's what I call end line in this sample. So uh, that's uh, the essence of these macros. Let's set uh, the breakpoint here so that we uh, will we'll be able to start debugging session on this line. And uh, uh, let's just test how this section of the code is working. So I already, I, I believe I already built this program. No, it's still building it. Okay, so I'm just going to run it now. And of course, I'm going to start in debugging mode so that I will stop at the breakpoint. And so here we uh, begin to uh, uh, execute our code. And uh, you can see that uh, I'll just close these debugging windows to uh, have more space uh, on my screen. And uh, you see that we just uh, uh, printed, uh, uh, please enter up to 10 characters. And now we're, uh, we're here executing this macro uh, and waiting for the user to enter something. So I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, A, B, C. Okay, so this is just uh, some sort of character input. And uh, you see that uh, the next output uh, tells us that you've entered this and this come, comes from this. And uh, then we print the content of the buffer. Remember the content of the buffer is already zero terminated after input. And so we print this portion right here. Then uh, we go to print uh, end line and end line ends the semicolon at the end and also uh, carriage return and line feed. Right, so the carriage return makes uh, cursor move to the beginning of the current line and line feed 
which is 13 and 10, carriage return and line feed, uh, moves it to the next line. So if we continue running this program, our cursor should be located on the next line. So that's the way we control the position of the cursor.